my name is Sarah James and uh, welcome to the Digital Craft Festival and um, our master maker demonstration by Arwen Jones, Potter, based in Modbury and Devon. Hi Arwen, how are you doing? Hi uh, Sarah, I'm fine, thanks for yeah, Nice to see you. Great, lovely to see you as well. Um, today we're going to, uh, Arwen is uh, going to, uh, you're here to see Arwen do a, a, a ceramics uh, pottery throwing uh, demonstration. And as I say, we've got, we've got um, um, a chat facility. So if you did, as we go along, as you know, I'm going to, I'm going to chat to Arwen as he goes along and we're going to have a, I try not to put him off. I'm sure not, not a lot puts him off to be fair, but we're going to have a little chat about things. And, um, uh, but if, if there's any questions you want to ask, pop them in the chat facility. And then as they come up, I try and, um, and answer them. And Kate Strasden, who's can you quite see in the box here, she's giving you a wave. She's co-hosting uh, the meeting today. So um, she she's managing the questions in there. So, and also if you want to actually ask a question yourself, um, do put it in the chat facility that you'd like to actually speak to Arwen, okay? But at the moment, if you could keep yourselves on, on mute, that would be uh, really helpful so you can hear, because any sort of sound from anywhere starts to cut into the thing. Um, this is being recorded and it will be available to watch back um, on our YouTube channel probably middle of next week, I'd have thought, by the time we've had it. We're only editing it very slightly, literally top and bottom, so it's not going to be very different. Um, so, Arwen, welcome. Thank you. Uh, obviously, thank you for doing this. I know it's been, we've had a few meetings get to get this get this sorted, but I think it Can everyone see, obviously, Arwen, and we can see a, a close-up of his wheel so we've gone to great lengths to try and make this work so well done Arwen for persevering because it was quite chip -chip. thank you to my neighbor Tom for being a legend and giving me all of the kit that he's had he's a superstar yeah well, we, well it was obviously quite important that people could actually see what you were doing in detail so that is uh, that was a that was worth doing isn't it absolutely absolutely yeah, right, yeah. So can I, I just it's, say it's I think yes. it's really important that that um those, everyone watching, if don't be afraid to ask a question because these sorts of things work best when everyone watching participates as much as they want to. Um, so it's really, uh, you know, that will, it will make a better for a better experience for everybody if if you're brave enough to ask a question. Um, yeah. I found okay. that with these, with it, with the on Zoom, people sort of tend to ask questions as 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 things sort of go along a bit. That's perfect. That's exactly how it should be. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, so do feel free to put questions in as you go along, and I mean, I, 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 I don't know whether you want to talk about what you're going to make today, Aaron, and then we'll maybe have a little conversation as you're doing something. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Um, right. Okay. So, I decided I'd make some lemon squeezers, or a couple, or one, depending on how it goes, um, and then depending on the time, if we have any time left at the end, maybe. Um, a suggestion of you know anything else that somebody might like to see me making um, I'm going to start by in a moment by throwing the lemon squeezer um, then once I've uh, once I've done that I'll move on to showing you how I carve the the the, the grooves in the lemon squeezers okay um, and then also how I finish the bottoms um, I'm trying to see which camera best shows that best that one probably okay um, I've only got one screen in front of me so I can't see my big main screen I've just got the detail screen up so let me know if, if things aren't quite in the right place. Okay. Um, so yeah, as you can see, I, I put these three up here now. So this one I threw yesterday um, in preparation for the, for the event. Um, this one is one that I made a few months ago that's been biscuit fired, which is the first firing up to about a thousand degrees. Uh, and this one is obviously a finished one. And I just thought I'd put them here because it highlights really quite wonderfully how the pots shrink. Uh, so, I mean, this was thrown yesterday and it's already shrunk because I can now pick it up and it's, it's not soft and, and well, it's soft, but it's not sticky anymore. Um, and as I say, it, it really is quite amazing. 15% on average, uh, depending on how much water there is in the clay to start with. Okay, right. I'm just going to move these out of the way. Um, is that okay, Sarah? Do you want me to say anything else? Do you think? You know, from each, it's quite interesting though, from each phase, isn't it? That you see. Even Absolutely. From, yeah. From the, yeah. Bits the firing, you know, it's going down again, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Well, when you come to an event, you see, the, you know, people see the finished product. Um, and that's why it's, it really is quite, you know, there's quite a notable difference, I think, um, so between, the, between the three. And yeah. you're factoring that all into then in terms of the, when you're making it, I guess. Absolutely. So, I mean, it's not necessarily so important when I'm making a lemon squeezer because it is just one piece that's had a bit of carving done on it. But 
for example, when I'm making my oil bottles um, and I'm putting, I have to make the, the opening in, in the bottle. Let me reach one from behind. Try not to make everything fall over. So when I'm making, uh, let me see that. When I'm making that opening, mm. I have to make it 15% bigger so that that will fit into it yeah. when it's finished. So little things like that. They're a yeah. challenge that's to be overcome, and I quite like those little challenges. They, so. they are a big challenge of the of, of conduction throwing, isn't it? Or, to, or throwing for domestic way, you know. It's, 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 yes, it's, indeed. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and while I'm, I, I suppose I am technically a production thrower, I don't. I'm not quick, um, and I don't throw hundreds of pots in one no. sitting. I throw small batches. So, for example, when I throw lemon squeezers, I'll throw 15 lemon squeezers, which is a board full for me. Um, and that probably take me a couple of hours. Yeah. But I find that when I come to finish them, if I have more than 15 to do in one go, <laughs> I lose the sensitivity in my, in my finger from pressing as I carve the, yeah, the pot. Yeah, yeah. So you just, it, it works better for me to, yeah. to just do a batch of 15. You know, if I'm making mugs, I might throw 40 or 50 in a sitting and then move on to the next thing. So, but all it's right. The it's the accuracy, I think, is what I'm talking about, really. That, and, and repeating the accuracy, that's what's got you... Quite yes. Uh, again, I always find that I'm, um, if I throw bigger batches than that, you, I find I lose my, my focus and the pots become less precise for want of a better way of putting it. And I like to be quite accurate in how I make things as you'll probably see in a moment. Um, anyway, I'm just going to move these out of the way. Could you tell uh, us what clay you're using today? With, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm using a white stoneware clay that, um, that I get made for me by Valentine's up in Stoke-on-Trent. Um, and they're very good to me. Dave here, who, uh, who runs the, 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 clay, the clay yard, he, um, he mixes two of their standard bodies together me, two thir together for me rather, uh, two thirds of a smooth body and one third of a, of a slightly grog body. And that gives me what I like. The grog body on its own is too grogged and the smooth body on its own is just a little bit too... Well, it's a bit like plasticine, really. It doesn't quite do what I want it to do. Yeah. So, yeah, it's not as forgiving as it needs to be. Right, okay, so I'm just going to get my wheel going round and check the noise because it should be okay. Yeah, no, that's all fine. I decided to use my, uh, my little shimpo um, because it's, it's called a whisper for a reason. Yeah, it's uh, silent. It is absolutely uh, And my other wheel, you wouldn't be able to hear me <laughs> while, I'm, while it's on. It really is quite a noisy thing. So, right, uh, okay. Any questions? Come on, put some questions in if you have questions. Well, was, uh, the first one was, a real, well, we had the first question about the clay. So the clay, you have, you have okay. to mix for you specially. So is it like the Aaron Jones mix in? Is that what people... No, 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 quite, no, no. When it comes in the bag, it has special mix written on it. But, yeah. um, but that's, that's about it, really. It's just, as I say, you know, Valentine's, I found them to be a wonderful company, really helpful. Um, yeah. And um, hopefully I'll get a discount now when I order next time because yeah, yeah, I'm giving no, exactly. them lots of plugs. But it's, it's, a stone, <laughs> it's a stoneware essentially, is it? It is, yeah. I fire up to, um, well, I fire to cone nine when I'm firing in, the, uh, in my electric kiln, which is the oxidized stuff. And I've just started mm -hmm. doing some reduction work, which is cone 10, which again yeah. is a little bit hotter. So, you know, yes. from 1260 to 1285-ish. Yeah. Um, and, and so, yeah. Um, in an electric kiln, the, then, did you say that? Did you say that? Already? It was the first part, yeah. I mean, yeah. the greens, um, uh, can you see my hand there? I can't see that screen, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. That's, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, the that's greens fine. and my pale blue, the work that, I, that most people know me for, that's all fired in an electric kiln, um, so it's oxidised. Um, and that's um, the work I've been making, basically, since I left college. Um, and, and, well, started on my own back in 98. Um, and um, I've now managed to get myself a use of a gas kiln so i'm also starting to develop some some reduction fired pots which i suppose people are more familiar with as a as a stoneware pottery uh, tradition um so the thing the pots you can see behind me so the, the black ones for example are a temaku which is a traditional chinese or japanese or both yeah. really um uh production fire glaze um but again it's staying within the parameters that, that, that I like which is functional it has to have a function you know and the form follows a function all of that Bauhaus, Cabousier, um, Mantra it, 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 it's what I how I work it's what inspires me and, and moves me forward um, yeah the work is constantly evolving but it's but it has to still fit within those parameters anyway shall I shall I make a you start? You get going and I've got some questions coming in so I'll ask them as you cool. go along is that okay? Yeah, yeah no, so, no, magic. Um, Sophie Crofts is asking what weight of clay is for this for this for this yeah, item. Sure. Yeah, good question. Um, so when I make the um, 
and the lemon squeezers, I use a pound of clay. So, you know, whatever that is, yeah. 250 yeah. grams ish. Yeah. Um, I'm old school. I've got an old school set of scales that you can probably see in the corner there. Um, yeah. And um, that's where I started. Uh, that's what I started using. I now have a, uh, I shall show you, if you remind me to show you shortly, I will, um, I will, uh, once I've made this pot, I'll show you what I use to measure the weight of my clay now. Um, it's basically a stick that I put against the extruded lump of clay that I, that I have and it has marks on it and those marks denote a weight. So it saves me having to put them on a scale and yeah. check I've got the right weight. It just speeds things up a little bit. Yeah. So, so it gives me more time to make. Okay. So, I, but not really. Yeah, it's I double check it, but you know, yeah. I, you know, unless I've made absolute howler, it, it stays. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. basically I start by making a pork pie, um, quite shallow, quite shallow. Um, the lemon squeezes are thrown in one piece. Um, so I start by making the rim, which I'm going to do now. Okay. So I put my finger down at the edge, push it down to what I think is roughly going to be the right thickness for a base. Yeah. And then quickly throw it up. I keep a little bit of clay at the top just to make the rim because I like to have a chunky rim on the pots. When they're being used, it's the rim that tends to get the batter in. So if you give it a little bit more clay there, um, I find that it tends to make them just that little bit more durable. Um, okay, so... And as you, can you see the, the, the mark, the little stick? Yeah, 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 you should be. Okay, so before we came online, um, I threw one quickly just to set up my mark because it saves me having to faff around with, with calipers and, and what have you to get the first one done. The first one always takes me a little bit longer because that's exactly what I do. I make sure I've got the right size. And then I literally just throw the rim to the tip of that needle. And that's my, that's my walls basically of my lemon squeezer done. Um, as I said, they're all thrown in one piece. So the next movement is to put my finger right down to the center of the, of the pot, right down through to the board underneath. Okay, so I've done that. All the way through. I then, all the way right down to the, right down to the, to the bat. Yeah. Okay, um, and then I literally, I open it up slightly at the bottom and then squeeze with my little finger, bring it up and then I just begin to close it over. Okay, um, it's fairly straightforward, but it's just a little bit fiddly. Um, and then it's literally with my with my little finger, I, I I grab a bit more clay, create that ridge, and then close it over. Because it is so important about the durability of what you're making, isn't it, Aaron? Because I've got quite a few pieces of your work in the house, and I was going to grab some and bring it over. Actually, I realised that most of it's been used, is in use as we speak. You know, you do use it. <laughs> <laughs> you're very good. Thank you. <laughs> no, they are made to be used. I'm, um, I'm, I'm and... the potter's friend, really, because I actually do use it and sometimes break it, then I go back and buy it again, you know. So every time usually... <laughs> well, you know, people, it, like, that is part of it, isn't it? Stuff. Yeah, I you're getting, I mean, They're made to be used, and, and the, for me, the... You're only getting a small part of the pleasure of the pot if you're just looking at it. Mm. Um, you know, squeezing a lemon, it, although it's a simple thing, it, yeah. it's actually quite pleasurable. Because <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, it, it, the, when you use something and it works, that in itself, you know, holding a mug and drinking from it, it feels nice in your hand. It feels nice when you put it to your mouth to drink from. Those are things that when I'm making, I, I, they're considered. Um, yeah. So, you know, if you're not using it, for, I don't feel as though you're getting the full benefit of the pot. And no. if you break it, I try to make them affordable so that yes. it's not the end of the world and you'll just hopefully buy another one. Um, yeah, I, think not... I think I bought a lid of dark for me the first time around once but, you know, a very long time ago and I think I did eventually break the lid but now that's got a plant in it. Yes, yeah. so I, I made another pot for you as a present. Somebody you made, gave it to you as a... Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I got given another one then as a, as a gift with yeah. a different type of lid. Yes. It was, more, it had a, it was inside the... That's right. Evolution, this is what I'm talking about. It. Yeah, it yes. was great. things don't stand still. That is that was down to a, a a visual thing, but also b speed of making. It's a lot easier to make a gallery on the on the body and then finish a, throw a lid to the right size than it is mm. to throw a gallery on the lid and make it fit inside the pot and all the rest yeah. of it. So you know, yeah. it's just as you get better, as you learn more, you hopefully evolve and keep moving forward. Um, well, anyway, let me just close this off. I've, as you can see, I'm, it's big enough to just about fit my little finger in, um, and that's basically where we are I, I literally just it's simple collaring so get the wheel going around fairly quickly and then just literally pull it in so it's closed off now and I've pinched off a little bit of clay 
I've got a question okay. for you, Arwen. Um, Go on. Uh, Scott. Scott Czech, I've done Scott Czech. Is where's he from? Scotland or is it Scott Czech? I'm not sure. You talk about throwing in batches. Do you have any top tips to creating work that is precise? Um, <laughs> top tip would be um, make sure the clay that you're using <laughs> is all the same weight or very close to it in the first place. That way, if you're if you're um, making, say, starting with a simple cylinder, which is effectively a mug. Um, you are going to have a greater chance of using the clay in the, in, in the same way. So if it's the same width of a base, it should therefore have the same amount of clay to go up to the same height. Um, and then, as I say, if, it, if, it's the, um, if it's the same weight, it should make it a lot easier. Um, also, I mean, I use a very simple, I don't know if you can see it all there, um, a little blob of clay on the edge of my bowl, that, I'm, that, I've, that I've stuck uh, an old um, remote control um, car aerial uh, into that's vaguely adjustable. And, and yeah, each, each batch will be ever so slightly different, but I've, 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 made, the, I've made a note of the sizes. I have, a, I have a list that is lemon squeezers are a pound in weight. They're five and a half inches across and one and a half inches deep. I don't measure the cone because it's, that was just a mission too difficult, I think. And lemons aren't the same size, so I don't think that that needs to be the same size. Okay, so basically that's the that's the 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 body of the pot. Um, we it's use a bit of water question. when we're throwing, so there's sometimes a little bit of water that gathers at the bottom. There's not much in this. I just use a little bit of a <coughs> sponge and an old brush. Okay, this is a. I mean, you can do this with your finger, but I like to have. Um, quite a high finish on my pieces. So I use this um, little tool so that I can get underneath and I push in underneath and create a more slender neck to that squeezing cone. And then as I come back up, I push in and I lift the pot that the cone up slightly as I do that. What I want when I'm making the lemon squeezer is I don't want the cone to sit below the rim of the pot. Um, the first ones I used to make, they did, and I found that actually when you squeeze the lemon, you can catch your knuckle on the, on the side of the pot. Um, and also it meant that the, the pot itself was, didn't quite hold enough juice for a lemon. So I'm going to grab this biscuit fired one. Um, and you can see if I, I'm going to take this. Okay, there you go. Can you see that? You see how that, that cone sits and that makes it, a, it's easy to use, and when you're juicing it, you're not going to catch your knuckles, so there's more depth, to, uh, um, more room to carry. <coughs> uh, I've, I've done the, the, the rim. I, uh, I then finish the cone. Again, I make this, and I try and make it nice and smooth and even, because when I'm carving, this surface is what is going to be is going to be the top surface that creates the the edge for juicing. Okay. Hello, is that Eric Saxby I can see in the screen there? Yeah. It might be. <laughs> there you are, hello Eric. Sarah's disappeared for some reason, so I've got Eric. Hello, yeah, uh, yeah I'm not sure what's happening. Hello Sarah, you're back again. Yeah, well, I, have a little, uh, I had a little funny five minutes there, not quite sure what's happening there. It's all right, it's all right. <laughs> you're, you're, you're How are the questions going? going? Any more questions? I'm, I'm... A little bit there. Yeah, there <laughs> we go. So, bear in mind I'm chatting away while I'm doing this. I'm not being, I'm not being the most... Um, Diligent and speedy. But you have some more questions, Alex. Yeah, yeah, please do. So I, I undercut one, under here. Just let me finish I, this bit. One is that really A helps me take the when I wire it off helps me get the the wire underneath. Oh. But also helps me create a ridge to catch any glaze when I'm once I've glazed it when it's fired, then it shouldn't run off and therefore create a second pot. Okay, almost done. This is the bit I'm gonna. I would normally do this around here, but I don't think you can see it very well. So I'm going to try and make my spout just on the side here. See that bit? Oh, no, that's even worse. <laughs> I was thinking about this yesterday when I was practicing. I thought, how am I going to do this so that people can see? So you can see I've put a little pouring spout on there. Um, I just straighten that up. Okay. So basically a dry hand. I touch the side of the pot because I've cleaned all of the slurry off with my tool. My fingers stick to that. My dry fingers stick to that tacky pot. Then with a wet finger, I slide it over the clay and create that, that lip there that you can see. Okay. And that is 
I've got a couple of questions for you, Aaron. So uh, one's, for about, one's about uh, one of my words from Julie saying, one of my green mugs, one of your earlier designs has dropped. Do you still make items in the green? Yeah, you still do, don't you? In green. Yeah, yeah. It, they may vary. I mean, that is the same green, um, yeah. but it's, it's um, the materials that we use to make the glazes come out of the ground. So there will be some natural variation. Also, I'm now using a different kiln. I think it's probably the third or fourth kiln since I started. And they all have different, they all fire differently, even though they're electric. So you'll get, this one is a lot bigger. So it gets hotter against the edges, the heat radiates and inside it's a little bit cooler. Where they're cooler, there'll be more of the bluey green, the bluey color. Where it gets hotter, it'll be more green because the crystals in the glaze have dissolved because of the heat to create that translucent glaze. And what I'm trying to do is create that, that balance between uh, something that's partially dissolved and something that hasn't. So it gives a nice depth to the, to the pot. We have another question. That answer the question. Yeah, the Thumbs up or not? Yeah, well, I think, it's, yeah, I think basically I've accepted that it might not be exactly the same. I think is what you're trying to say, but it'll be pretty, pretty close. Yeah. But, uh, we've got yeah. another question from uh, Megaboss, who's actually based in Istanbul in, in uh, Turkey. So how many of the squeezes did you make before you became efficient at it? So I think we're all going back to your training, and I do want to ask you some questions about that, Aaron, at some point. Okay. Yeah. So, um, yeah, when I... You know, I, mean, I, I didn't go to college and learn how to make lemon squeezes for a start. I think it was probably, what, nine, ten years ago that I started to make lemon squeezes? Eight, ten years ago, maybe? Um, and it was just something that, that plays in your mind. You know, I, I'm inspired by all sorts of different things and different makers. And Andrew and Joanna Young, have, in my mind, were always known for making wonderful pots. But lemon squeezes was one of the things that I always thought of as one of their items. Um, and I wanted to make lemon squeezes, but I didn't want to copy theirs. So I had to, in my head and, and through development, come across a, a shape, a design that I felt did the job, but didn't look as though I was mimicking somebody else's. Um, yeah. And I eventually came up with this, which was inspired by the old glass ones that you, you know, your granny used to have or your mum or whoever. Um, and, um, and, and I wanted to take it and, and make it my own. So that's kind of what I've done here. Um, and, um, but yeah, uh, practice is the only thing I would say. So when I started making them, they would take me longer to make and longer to finish, but the more you make them, the quicker they, you get at it. And you almost, the price hasn't changed. Interestingly, of a, of a lemon squeeze. If when I started making them to when I make them now, I can just make probably five more in a session than I could have done when I started making them. And that's, you know, that's just how it, how it goes. That's how I am able to, to make a living. I suppose is just to be able to make them a little bit quicker. Um, functional pots have a glass ceiling, so people want to use them and therefore they want to feel as though it isn't going to matter if they're going to drop them, have an accident. But hey, sorry, I probably went off, off piece a little bit there. No, sorry no, about that. no, I think that answers <laughs> the question very well, to be fair. I just did want to ask you, though, really about your training. So how did you, how did you start out as a potter? I think everyone will be wanting to know that. Yeah, um, when, I was at, when I was at school, um, I, I, when I was in the sixth form, I had a chance to have a go on a potter's wheel. Um, and it was quite nice. I sat there and all of a sudden this piece of clay was in the middle of the wheel and I was like, oh, and everybody else was doing this and it was going everywhere. And I was like, well, it's in the middle now what? Um, and I loved it, um, sort of hooked in, I suppose, but, but they needed the room for something else. And so after a couple of terms of having a go, it, it disappeared and I couldn't take it any further. Yeah. Um, I, uh, I then, when I was retaking my A-levels, because uh, <laughs> I spent far too long playing cricket when I should have been, um, when I should have been working. Um, I was about to say, I, because I went, when I looked you up, when we first came up, it was Wikipedia. You're in Wikipedia for cricket. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, it's a, a, a former life. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, and, and, and um, I did my retakes, and I also did a ceramics A-level in Oxford um, at the Oxpens um, College, the sixth form college. I did that sort of part time in six months and I, I passed just. And I then went on to, um, went on to foundation. Having, I did art at A-level originally. Um, and and I, again, I just loved it. And I, I moved on from there. I went to Loughborough um, College, what was then Loughborough College of Art and Design. Uh, it's now part of the university. And I did a, a ceramics degree. Again, unfortunately no longer running in, in its same format. It's now part of another course. Or, um, and, and it was brilliant. Three years making pots. That's um, quite interesting. Always wanted to make pots. I, I, I applied to Loughborough and we'd have, we'd, we'd have been together on the same course, but I didn't get in. <laughs> no way. 92 to 95. <laughs> oh, well, maybe, I was maybe a little bit before you then, because I was, 
Uh, I was there, I was 89 to uh, 93. I wasn't at Loughborough again, I actually went, some, I went somewhere else, but there was another story. Oh, right. yeah, we'd, have, <laughs> yeah, we'd, have, we'd have crossed over just about. Yes, yeah, so there you go. I, I was old for my year in at school, and then I took a year to retake, and so it put, sort of pushed me on a little saying, bit. Yeah, there's a, there's a story in the middle there, isn't there? Definitely. Yeah, there is. Yeah, but no. So yeah, and, and then um, after I after I finished that, I was always making thrown pots. I, I had an affinity with the wheel. Always have it. Just yeah, um, and I stayed on for a year there as a te as a technician in the department, which was great because it gave me access to a workshop, but it also gave me the ability to continue learning about process and running a workshop basically and those sorts of things. Um, I also did a two week placement with the Friths when I was in my second year there, which again was oh. absolutely fantastic, uh, wonderful people and, and great workshop and a great, great potters. Um, and, and again, that basically said, yeah, this is what you want to do. Um, and I loved it. Um, so, and then after I did that year, I then went to um, work at a place called Gwilly Pottery, which is just outside Carmarthen. Yeah. Um, in know, South Wales, um, well. yeah, yeah. I worked there for worked there for uh, twelve months, um, working for Prue Prue Green, um, and that was again huge. You know, having you know sat in a in a college environment, basically, you know, you you think to yourself, well, can I sit at a potter's wheel or whatever, day in day out, making pots for other people necessarily? You know, if you can and if you love it, then okay, then you can go for it. So I did that and liked it and. It was a yeah, very busy yeah. country, wasn't it? Really pottery, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There were, well, I think, there were at the time there were three, four full time people. Most of the time, the people would either throw and make, or just uh, sorry, throw and decorate, yeah. or just decorate. I was the only one there who didn't decorate. I'm, I'm afraid my decorating skills are really not not worth talking about. Uh, so yeah, um, she's quite a taskmaster, I understand. Yeah, no, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. you earn your money. <laughs> I'm just going to put this one to one side. Uh, okay, right. So, having having done that, uh, keep talking, Sarah, please. <laughs> so you work really pottery. So obviously, you know, I know, I, I always, um, you know, I can, I'm about the only person around who can say your name properly. But, um, yeah, well, there might be a Portuguese contingent that can as well. Oh, well, done, well done. I'm sure she can, yeah. Um, but family <laughs> are from North Wales originally. My family are from North Wales. I was yeah. born in, in, in Devizes in Wiltshire. Um, yeah. My father was in the Air Force, and it just happened to be where, we were, where he was based well when, you know, when I came along. If it had been 12 months or so earlier, I'd have been born in Saigon. So, you know, it's <laughs> just the way of the, way of the world. No chance of being born in North, in North Wales. <laughs> uh, well, no, my sister, she's eight years older than me. She, she was yeah. born in North Wales, but not me. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. No. But you, so, you so, no, my father's from, from, from Denby and my mother's from Transvenet. So, oh, right, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And so you went for Gully Pottery, so you were there for a year. Then what, at what point then did you start out on your own? Is there, is there... Um, yeah, when I, when I basically, my wife, she, um, she was doing a teacher training at, at, um, in Cardiff at, in, in that year. Um, and then um, she got a job in, in Trowbridge. Uh, in the September. So I, I left then and we moved there and I was working, doing bar jobs and gardening jobs all over the place. Um, and um, yeah, not making pots, um, but wanting to. Um, and I asked to go on a cricket tour to um, Zimbabwe in, in the January. So I went along on this cricket tour to Zimbabwe, three weeks playing cricket over there, which is, I wanted to be a professional cricketer. Got to put that in there. That's what I, my dream was. And yeah. ceramics was just something that I was doing on the side. Um, and um, yeah, and I went over there and I saw a different world, completely different world. And it made me realize how fortunate I was and that I actually needed to be a bit more proactive and pull my finger out basically and find a workshop and get on with it. Because yeah, I was told, you know, if you can do what you love as a job, then it's never a job. Um, and so, yeah, and if I stuck doing bar work and gardening, I'd have done that and it wasn't what I wanted to do. So I thought, right, I'm going to, I'm going to set up. So when I got back, I, um, I got back at the end of, end of January and by the 18th of March, which is when I set up, I had a workshop at the Black Swan in, in Froome in Somerset. Oh, great. Yeah, that's where I started. So, I had my first so workshop year, there. what year is that then, Aaron? What year are we talking 98. about? 98. 18th of March, 1998 is when I, when I moved into my workshop. Um, for the first time um, and I was I was still doing bar work and I was still doing the gardening and, and working with you know doing all sorts of different jobs and in the workshop part-time because I didn't have any customers I didn't have any pots to sell I started I bought machinery 
um, you know, I had things to, you know, very, you know, had lots of bills to pay basically, and I needed to make sure I could pay those bills. And then gradually, as the work became known and people started buying it, and I, you know, I was able to then cut back on that on those other jobs. And a job as a technician part time came up at the um, at the secondary school in 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 Froome. and I went for that, and I, I got that job as the art technician, um, and that just set me off then. And after four years, I was able to pack that job in and go full time. Um, which coincided roughly with moving down to Devon. So, so around about 2001. Yeah, 2001. Yeah, it was just after the, um, just after the Twin Towers. That's the, oh, uh, right. that's the other yeah. landmark. There's, there's yeah. the marker. Was, that was your marker, yeah. wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. 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 So, so I only had four years in that workshop as well. So you had to move out after four years. Ah, uh, right. Because they were okay. like startup workshops. So I'd been there for three years. So I needed to be thinking of moving on too. So, yeah. I yeah should I start, like, should I do a little bit yeah, of yeah, carving? Yeah. I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm terrible. I'm a typical man. I can't multitask. Sorry, um, I'll shut up for a minute. But someone's asked a question about about pottery, so we better ask that. Um, yeah. um, uh, what are your go-to tools that couldn't be without as a potter? That from that's from Scott Jack again. What are your okay, tools? yeah. Um, right. Um, well, I don't have. I mean, I don't think I have a huge collection of tools, um, but I make. Uh, when I'm throwing, I use, uh, sorry, I'm trying to angle my camera. So I use Perspex ribs that I basically just copied a, a wooden or a, or, a, or a steel tool um, and then cut it out from a piece of Perspex. I find them so much more useful. They don't rust. They don't, I can get them nice and smooth. So I always get a good finish and they're really hard wearing. I, I think I cut these out 18 years ago. Um, and you wouldn't know. Yeah. So yeah, it's just, yeah, they just keep going. I won't ever have to change. And um, so those, yeah. Those would be the same. Um, when I'm making lemon squeezers, I couldn't, I could do it without one of these. Um, but hey, <laughs> I like to. And I've never seen them anywhere else. So you know, I just pick this one up and it and it works. It's a treat. Um, yeah, magic tool. Um, um, yeah. Going again. Someone's asking if you offer courses. Do I, <laughs> I'd love to offer courses. Um, I don't really have the space and. I'm always making pots. Um, I never have, <laughs> sounds terrible, I very rarely have a stock unless I'm going to building up to go to an event. And so constantly with, because I do a lot of wholesale work too, and so I'm constantly having to make pots um, and to be able to take, I'd love to, but yeah, I'm just not organized enough, <laughs> no, <fair laughs> basically. Enough. Well, uh, we'll this is the other you, tool, sorry, going back we'll to that other question, this is the other oh. tool that I, that I wouldn't be without. Um, and this is a piece of old packing wire from, from bricks. Um, and I, I um, fold it over, bend it, tie it together with a little bit of tape. And this is my basically my normal go-to turning tool for most things. I don't do a lot of turning, but if I have to turn anything significant, this is the one that I use. Uh, a lid or something like that is, is, is the main tool. So, yeah, those are the ones I couldn't be without, I suppose. Well, yeah. I'll, let Sorry. I'll let you carry on with the next little batch room, then we'll chat in a bit then. You, you talk yeah, yeah, right. So, okay. So next part of the job is to, is to put the grooves in your lemon squeezer. Um, I'm assuming that's visible. Everyone can yeah. see. Okay. Yeah. So they're all done by eye and by hand. Um, it's just, there's loads of ways to make things. Um, and there's no right way and there's no wrong way. It's just the way that works for you. Um, and I think that's the one thing I've learned over the years. So I found a, found a tool that worked for me. I picked it up. It's just a ribbon tool. I, I use the curved end, not the square end. I push it in there and keeping a firm grip with this hand, balancing the pressure so that I'm not pushing the, the, the knob over at all. Cause this is still, it's not soft, but it's still got giving it. Okay. I then push up in a slight curve up to the top okay you can see is that visible yeah you can see the curve yeah. there okay yeah. right so, so that's the first one that's probably the hardest one really because you just got to get the curve and the finish and then after that it's just repeating that line but again when i first started i used to bring every line right up to the top like this one and i used to find when i got round to the end i was halfway down the halfway down the pot with my <laughs> so, oh, this looks a bit strange so what i do now is the next line I give a bit of a gap and then I come up. I always stop a bit short. So can you see, sorry, can you see that? Yes, stops yeah, a bit short. Yeah, that's really good. Okay. Yeah. yeah, and then the next one, again, up I come. And I go right to the top again. Uh, and it fills I it in. See. 
Yeah. So yeah? When I've that, sorry, I'm, I'm, I need to switch it the other way. I'll switch it. So if anybody can't understand that, please say, so because I'm going to go around again and I'll just keep talking through it. Yeah. So it's All a right? one, one low, one high sort of thing, as it were. Basically, yeah, one below and then one up to the top again. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And that's... And that's basically what I do all the way around. Um, and obviously when I'm sitting there and I'm making my 15, the first one is usually a bit tentative. Um, and then by the time I got to the 15th, I'm like, oh, where did they go? Um, <laughs> and they're all done. Um, again, this clay is just about perfect for carving. It wants to be softer than you would have it normally to turn, um, mm -hmm. I find. As you see, it's still... Still got a bit of give in it, but mm. not so soft that you're going to skid through it, it but not so hard that you break your finger trying to carve it. Mm. Um, and are the okay. grooves that, I've got a question here, are the grooves are the same depth? Um, then more or less, I yeah. think is the best way to put it. I'm not gauging the depth, I'm just doing what feels comfortable. Yeah. Remember, once I've, what I'll do with the pot that I threw first, I'll cut that in half in a moment so you can see the thickness through. And then you'll see how much, I've roughly got an idea of how much I can press because I threw the pot, yeah? So I deliberately leave the top a little bit thicker than I would ordinarily so that I know I've got some depth to carve. <laughs> if I go through, it's not the end of the world. I just push a bit of clay in from the underside and hope that it looks okay. And if it does, it stays. If it doesn't, it gets put to one side as a second. Uh, but normally, touching wood, that's probably one in a hundred that that happens on. So... It's not too bad. Um, I'm going to keep going here. So it's important to have had that thickness there, isn't it? To be able to groove those yes. really Especially strong lines out. When you've got this change of direction here, you, sorry, can you, I'm looking yeah, at the yeah, camera, you yeah, see, here. You can see that. When, you, when you've got a change of direction there, you're naturally going to get a good thickness of clay there anyway. So I yeah. know that I, can, that I can press in quite hard at the bottom, but as I'm coming up, I'm letting off as I go up. So it's getting it's getting to be shallower a shallower groove as I go up but there's still a groove there um, and remember you know when you're the the grooves themselves help the squeezing of the lemon but it's the pressure and the twisting of your hand on that cone that make it juice nicely mm. if I didn't put any grooves in it at all it would still juice the lemon because it's your pressure that's doing it this mm. just helps a bit so that's the grooves true. are really really essential okay so then we go up here Okay, in an ideal world, that one would have been the last one because then it would have fit perfectly, but it didn't. So I just fill that gap up and you think, oh no, it's not going to match. But, you know, really, you wouldn't know where that started or finished. No, that's absolutely great. So, you know, that's, 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 that's the, the joy of doing it, I suppose, or the beauty of doing it. Okay, so that's the top bit. And it, I've got a few marks and a few grooves on here from my fingers as I've been pressing. When I, when I finish it off with a little, the little bit of turning I do on the base, um, I'll show you when I, I just touch that rim up with a sponge and it, and it looks, and it's fine, you wouldn't know. Um, so I'm just gonna put this one to one side and I'm gonna cut uh, the one I threw earlier in half. And then you can see, you give you guys a, rough, a better idea of, of where it is on, what it, what it is I'm talking about. Come on. There we go. Right. Sorry. It's distorted a little bit, but you know, bear with, um, which bit's going to come off that bit. Oh. Okay. I had to do it my way around just in case it didn't work. And then I could say, I'll do another one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Can everybody see that? So, yeah. you know, it's not that thick here. No. Um, there's a bit of thickness in the bottom there. Um, but here there's a nice bit of thickness to be able to take the groove. And then when I, when, as I come to the top, I lessen off, so there's, you know, it's, I shouldn't go through it, but that gives you a good, good impression. Everyone, yeah. Does that make sense? Anybody, anybody got a question on that? No? I think that, well, I think that looks really, you know, it's a very, you know, the way you threw it as well. It was, you can see how you did the, the execution of it as a, as a, a, is another matter for, for others to be able to do it, but you, you did explain it very well, I thought. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Has anyone, else, <laughs> has anyone else yet tried to make a lemon squeeze? I suppose I would like to know that. Has anyone else had a go or is this a, 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 a first for people? And someone has asked, um, 
do you sell, you know, I know you sell through your website, you sell through your showroom and you come to show. Just through my website. My website is brand new. It was launched yesterday. Yay. So, <laughs> so as I said, do, you, do, you, do you sell through major retailers? You, I mean, you don't really. Yes, I do a lot of wholesale. So, I yeah. mean, there's, on my website, there's a list of, of, the, the, of, of a few that, that I supply who regularly stop my work. But um, what I say, if people contact me, if they, you know, obviously if they can, if they want something, they can, and I've got it in stock at here, then by all means, buy it from me if they want. But um, if I haven't, if you contact me and tell me where you live, um, I'll be able to tell you pretty much where the closest outlet is. I supply lots of shops all over the country. Um, and depending on what it is you're after, what color you want, certain shops will have it, certain shops won't. Um, and yeah, that's the best way to go forward on that one, really. Um, yeah. But yeah, no, it's, it's from but Edinburgh sell, down to down to yeah. Penzance. Yeah, well, you, sell, you sell a lot through the Devon Guild as well because you're a member of the yes. Devon Guild. I'm a member of the Devon Guild. Yeah, I've, I, when I've when I've got pots, I, they go, they go to the Devon Guild basically um, when the, when it's open. Hopefully, it will reopen in the not too distant future. Soon, um, I think, is it soon? Hopefully. Yeah, yeah I've, I've I've not heard, but but then again, I've had my head somewhere else for a little while so <laughs> yeah well, well apparently um, sue hallam says your website's very nice so that's oh, good bless you thank you very and, much and julie, julie thinks you'd make a great blue peter uh, presenter so uh <laughs> yeah, so. i'm too old for that now aren't i <laughs> i know I, i'd like to present television but i think i'm about 30 years too late really so. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no okay programs these days <laughs> what i'm going to do next is i'm going to um put the chuck that I made yesterday so when I make these lemon squeezers because I know I've got to turn the bottom and you can't just turn a lemon squeezer upside down because it's got a pointy bit um, I make a I make what we call a chuck okay which is uh, there it's just a, a piece of clay basically that's that's hollow thrown out sorry I'm trying to there you go um, no, it's fine. Well done. okay yeah um, and I know that that's deeper than the than the than the point of the lemon squeezer um, I'm just going to centre that up. Um, and I know that when I threw it, I threw it to just wider than the, than the width of the, of the wet um, lemon squeezer rim. So they'll dry, they'll shrink at the same time. And I know that the rim will sit nicely on there. I can turn it upside down and just finish it off. Sometimes I have to cut a groove out of the side if I've made the, the lips a bit higher um, than I would, you know, than normal. But... Um, I would normally tap this, but I know that it's going to go everywhere if I do that. So <laughs> I'm being sensible and doing it the slow way. But when I'm doing this on my normal wheel, um, I would have thrown the, the, the lemon squeezers on my other wheel. And this wheel would have been in a different position. And I would have thrown this chuck on that one. And it wouldn't have come off. It would have been in the center. And I just left it to stiffen naturally. And then when I come to do the turning, it's already in the middle, so I don't have to do this bit. If that makes sense. Yeah. 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 So, again, it just saves me a bit of time. I've tried to limit the, the things apart from the throwing and get those down to as, as quick as I can, right? That's good enough. Okay. Right. Oh. I've put some holes in the back of that. Okay. Nobody told me that. <laughs> right. Okay. So... Kurt is asking what type of wheel is your normal wheel? My normal wheel is a, I think it's a Cowley traditional. Um, it's a very old, very old now. It's, it's probably what, 20 years old getting on for. Um, and um, I bought it when I moved down here because the, the, the wheel that I had originally was a second hand one. And it, something happened in the move. It didn't like being joggled around on the back of a truck and, and mm. when I came to use it again. It didn't want to work. So I had to buy a new wheel. Um, I thought, right, I'll do that. And it's, yeah, I've had to change the, the bearing on the wheel head a couple of times, I think. But yeah, it's, it's, it's had a fair bit of use. The seat's a bit grotty, but yeah, <laughs> it works. <laughs> but this one is quite new. Yeah. I, do, I, go, I do demonstrations at, uh, at various events as well. And this is the wheel I take with me because I can carry this myself. It, it works. Um, it's quiet. Um, and it, and it's, it's a great second wheel in the workshop because it doesn't take up too much space. And it's basically what I use for trimming. When I'm putting knobs on lids and things like that, I use this wheel to just finish things off. So, right, I'm just going to damp the rim of this so that it's a bit, apply a bit of pressure. I just turn it into a, a little bit of a slip. Okay, pop that on there upside down. Should be okay. 
just make sure it's pretty much in the middle. And do you keep and reuse the chuck Alwyn or do you? No, I, I used to. I used to think, oh, I'll wrap that up and I'll reuse it. It'll save me time. But actually it doesn't. It just goes furry and a little bit drier and I can't use it. And it's, it's, it's a piece of clay. I just dry it out and recycle it, uh, reclaim it. And that's fine. Um, and it takes me, what, 10 seconds to throw that at the end of the session, just to bob. A, there's, no, there's no precision in it apart from making it wide enough yeah, to just, just throw it, pop it and leave it to dry each time, make a fresh one. You know, yeah, it's a couple of, yeah, what, a pound and a half of clay or something like that that I use to make that. It's just, yeah. Um, and that is actually a better use of my time than it is to try and keep one dry all the time. I keep one damp all the time, rather. Sorry, this is... Like I said, I'm, I'm a typical man. I can't, I can't multitask. No, I leave it to it. Just gone too far, that's all. Right. There we go, that'll do. Okay, so... That's on there. I just literally trim the base just to put a, make it slightly concave so that when it sits in the kiln, it's, it's fine. And also when it's on a tabletop, it's not going to wobble, wobble and rock. Basically, that's all it is. Just a little bit of pressure. I mean, I've taken off next to nothing, but it's just enough to, to, do, to, to, you know, to make, it, make it work. I just tidy up that edge because I know that that's been rough from having been turned. Okay, I then, oh, and I then go just down on the inside here and create an angle. Now this is quite important because it's glazed on that on the inside of that, as you can see in there. Mm. Okay, um, and I don't want that glaze to run and ruin the pot basically. So what I do is I've turned that little ridge there, and then with another little tool, just a sharp edge basically, I just put a ridge in there that serves two purposes a it stops the glaze when it you know if, if it if it decides it gets too hot if there's a problem with the kiln or whatever and it overfires it, it means i've got less chance of losing the pot but also when i'm glazing it oh so here's my glaze tongs and here's the pot oh turn it around i put the point of the tongue into that groove. Oh, I'm, this is going to be fun. <laughs> I put the point of the tongue into that groove, grab it there, and that's how I've got my pot to dunk it in the glaze to glaze. And I know it's not going to fall off. Otherwise, I'm struggling to grip the pot when I want to glaze it. Okay, so there you go. Oh, everything has a purpose. <laughs> I try, it's, it's really quite strange. I try not to put anything on anything that's superfluous, really. It isn't, doesn't serve a function in the pot. It's, it's a... Yeah, it's just me. I'm a bit funny like that. Um, I like things to be just just right. There's nothing extra for the sake of it being there. Um, that's, yeah. <laughs> that's, yeah. What can I say? <laughs> right, okay. So that's that's a lemon squeezer. Um, I don't know what the time is. What is the time? Well, 53. It's five to, nearly five to one, actually, Arwen. So shall I just throw something? Is there anything that anybody wants me to do or do you want to wrap it up? Well, we, uh, we can, I think we can probably do another five minutes, really. That's, uh, that's, uh, we're on to the next, our next portion. We've got to go off and we can't. No, that's funny. I'm sorry. You're the boss. You're, you're, you're running the show, as it were. Well, so you tell I, me what I, you want. I'm happy to pick, take, take, if you want to take a request from the floor, I'm, I'm happy to hang on for another five, ten minutes. If, is that enough time, Aaron? Yeah, I've got, yeah, I'm just going to throw something quickly. So, yeah. You know. So does it, well, the first person to put it in, put what they want. In the chat, we'll get, it will get made. So, is anyone okay, don't, don't say a teapot because that's ridiculous. Yeah, don't, ask, don't ask for a teapot. <laughs> <laughs> right then, a jug, a jug, a jug. Right, that's, thanks. How's about that? <laughs> that was about that. Yeah, lovely. Cheers. Okay. Well, I, <laughs> right. Well, I, I okay. Can't agree on a pot, but I think you'd have to make the pot then, wouldn't you? So. Yes. No, I'm not going to. I'm not going to handle it. I'm just going to throw the jug. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to get rid of my needle because that's going to get in the way. Okay, normally when I'm throwing a jug, I would, I would, I'm going to, yeah, I'll sort it, don't worry about it. Uh, I would have my measurement set up. Everything is, I try to make everything look fairly similar. Um, I, I was listening to the, the conversation you had with um, the glass chap, and I think the, 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 no, sorry, the lady who, um, uh, who's doing, who, who does the, the rubbish portraits mentioned his, his conversation you had with him yeah, as well. Great, I, just, I listened to it live when it happened too. I thought it was fabulous. Yeah, the it was very funny. Yeah. I'm, I'm terrible really with names. And and anyway, he was talk, yeah, yeah, he was talking, yeah, he, but before that, he was talking about the exhibition he did with the CAA and how, you know, repurposing craft and how machines have taken over from bowls and plates. But 
that's what I make. So, you know, and my, my challenge to myself is how can I, how can I reproduce something and give it that similarity that people go, Oh, wow, they look the same. So everything is weighed. Everything is measured. Um, I might lose the top of this jug when I, <laughs> when I get there, cause it's going to be too tall. Um, but, um, yeah. Uh, okay. So, um, uh, that, that's so basically I would normally have my calipers set to um, this will be roughly a medium jug um, I would normally have my caliper set to the height but then I also set um, the caliper to two-thirds of the way up that height because I know that that's the optimal. If, if a jug I found is two-thirds belly one-third neck when you look at it it looks right the handle then sits on it nicely it works if it's got too hook, tall a neck I find it makes the pot look heavy so the, the base is too low. And if you, um, if you make the, the neck any shorter, it, I find it makes the neck look like it's disappearing into the pot. It just doesn't visually, it's, it's a, you know, hey. When I see things, I tend not to look at color. I tend to look at form and silhouettes in the first place. Mm -hmm. So, and that's how I, that's when I judge things. And I know most people see color first, but I, I tend to notice a form before a color. Okay, um, right. You always throw on a wooden bat, um, Adrian. Um, yeah, I do. I throw on a on a, on a bat um, because I don't like the sound of my a my hands rubbing on the wheel. But when I come to undercut it before I take it off, I don't like the sound the grating sound of the wood metal tool on the metal. Mm. Um, and that's you know that's basically basically why. Um, and. Uh, is it a speed issue as well? Obviously, you take it off and then you can put another one back on. Is that an it? Is, but for example, jugs like this, I would wet lift it anyway, so the back would stay on. Right. right. Um, so only if the if the pot was was uh, um, only if the pot was um, a shape wide and flat normally. Um, anything with a wide base, which I find you know, it's really quite difficult to lift it off because there's quite a lot of suction on the on the bottom, and you're going to distort the pot quite a lot um, mm. by doing anything too big as well. You've got a lot of weight of pot to, to carry. I don't do any turning or very little turning on the pots, so that when the jug comes off the wheel, all that happens to it, it gets its bottom wiped and a handle put on it. That's it. There's no more. There's no more turning, as it mm. were. So. Yeah. Right, Do you mix okay. your glazes, Adrian, if you can answer yeah. that one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so when I was at college, I spent the, pretty much the whole of my second year um, doing the work I had to do, but also focusing in the glaze room. See, I told you I was going to lose the top of this pot. <laughs> 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 oh, dear. Never mind. That's Never fine. Mind. Don't uh, worry about it. I won't worry about um, it. I think so think anyway, so, yeah, and, then, um, and then I, so the green glaze that, I, that most people know me for, um, that is the, that is a glaze that I basically worked on and came, came across and, and, and developed in my second year when I was doing my degree at Loughborough. Um, and it, it was, just, you know, hey, they say everybody's got a, got a hit record in them. I suppose every pot has got a good glaze in them somewhere. And I found mine quite early and I was very lucky um, and people liked it. Um, so, yeah. yeah, and I've been trying to get a good glaze since and I've, I've, never, I've never come across a really, really good one. It's hard to beat that green, isn't it? It really is yeah. hard to beat, yeah. Yeah, so you know, and that's just that's how it is. So, okay, so you can see a, you can see the jug. Um, I, I don't want to use my mucky hand to adjust the camera because no. Tom will kill me, and he's a big chap. <laughs> I think I think I think people are definitely getting the impression that I can see what how you. Okay, so and then I format. basically I I belly it out, finish it off, collar it in a little bit there. Uh, this is the bit you can't see, or can you? I suppose you can so on the big you screen. Can, you can go onto yeah. the onto the big uh, screen. Yeah, I haven't got the yeah. big screen in front of me. I've only got my your face and and the and the, and the zoom. So, oh gosh, uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Don't worry, swap, I'm still here. If you swap your the the to gallery view to to main screen, that shows up. That's okay. Right, and then I put a little ridge in there. Pull it out. This ridge is where the handle will start, so it gives me that um, that point that's common with all of the pieces. So, jugs, mugs, anything that has a handle, basically, I put this little ridge here, and it helps me, gives me that that, that starting point, so that when all of the pots are next to one another, it, they look similar. Okay, so I've done that. I would oh, 
just clean up the bottom. There we go. That's that. And then dry my hands off. One wet finger, dry hand. Uh, there. Can you see that? Okay. Yes. To either side and then pull in. That's the spout, nice and quick. And then I just grip it. So I'm going to do that there and squeeze gently and pull. And that just lifts the front of the, of the jug and helps to create that, oh, I'm going to pour. It suggests its function, which to me again is, is very important. A thing should tell you what it's going to do. Uh, and in, you tend, I tend to find that if it does that, it probably does it quite well. Yes. Um, and that's just, uh, there you go. So there we are. Brilliant. Well, Gino I, hope, won. I think that's <laughs> been fantastic. I hope we all agree that that was an absolutely brilliant uh, demonstration, Arwen. And, 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 oh, yeah, loved it. And no problem at all. It having to do it with uh, new technology um, and it, is, it has been, uh, you know, quite a journey to get us to this point. <laughs> it <laughs> certainly I, has, I really it certainly do, has. I think I, I'm sure everyone agrees that, that all the messages are coming up saying what a great demo that you gave. And uh, Thank you all for, for, for watching. Time. Really thanks. appreciate your support and, and thank you for, for yeah, <laughs> for no. watching me and asking great questions and taking part yourselves. No, Brilliant. Could, thank you, you very much. We probably could have talked a lot more, but I think, you know, we need we people here to really to see you make make pots rather than us waffle on about like, how we knew, how we how we met but you know <laughs> yeah well true it's all part of the story though isn't it <laughs> yeah exactly we'll, we'll definitely we'll definitely chat again and i'd like to thank everyone for joining us today at the digital craft festival and there's stuff going on still there's uh, another zoom uh, conversation going to happen at half past one with the weaver andy parker and there's films other demo films on the website digitalcraftfestival.co.uk and loads of chats and obviously websites to go visit and hope you support support the makers that are uh, you know affected by by the covid crisis at the moment and i really you know got a few you know lots of shows are cancelled like the one that arwin is normal you know you're booked in to do bobby tracy which would have happened a couple of weekends ago yeah so, i was supposed to be earth and fire this weekend that was yeah. cancelled there was yeah. Ch so, uh, chilipri yeah so festival wanna, gone. the best so, yeah. way you can show your appreciation is to to hop onto arwin's new brand new website maybe you Maybe have a little look down and see if you find something that you want to buy. But uh, that's another story again. But thank you very much. This will be this has been recorded. This will be turned into a YouTube film and will be available to watch a back um, middle of next week. And uh, thank you all for coming. Cheers, Arwin. Thank you. Cheers, Sarah. Ta so, well, chat soon.